economic foundation, so the foundation for Marx, that any Marxist knows and anybody else knows, is economic. On that point, both Pune and Ambedkar, um, culture is a very broad term, and uh, that includes spirituality, as we'll see in both cases. They saw this as a key to social and even economic transformation. That Pune provided us the compass that points to the true north, the true north of total emancipation. On their third, followed by mapping out some of the territory and charting out the escape routes using that compass. How do we actually get to that destination, to the promised land? which is free of caste, class, and patriarchal oppression. All of it, Pune, in fact, lived it out. His first work, along with Salih by Pune, was towards Brahmin widows. And I said, why are they helping Brahmin widows? Well, because they saw them as the first part of a triad, three. After that, sugar. And then on the sugar. All three had to be emancipated. All three had yet to be emancipated. Both Pune and Ambedkar wrestled with Brahmanical culture. You may call it Hinduism, but most specifically with Brahmanical culture, which they saw as both the source and an instrument of the oppression of the Dalit Bhagavatams. In the intellectual struggle, they both used the tools of deconstruction and reconstruction within the constraints of time. Let me give you just a couple of examples of each deconstruction and reconstruction by each of them or both of them. Let's look at first foundations of deconstruction by Pule and then Ambedkar. Pule did a very creative Part, rereading from below of the Vishnu avatars, and uh, he did this especially for the Bhagiraja Baman avatar. Okay, the Baman avatar, but in the context just opposed with Bhagiraja. So. There we are talking about a very creative re-reading which he did in Gulandri, primarily, the book translated to slavery. Ambedkar's meticulous, meticulous exegesis, that means he went into the exact text of most of the major Hindu scriptures, sacred texts, to explore first of all and then to explore the riddle in Hinduism. That's a title of book, of course. But what are you doing that book? He takes all these texts and he explores them in detail and then he explores these myths. So both of them did this work of deconstruction in his book, Who Were the Shudras? Ambedkar engaged in a disciplined but creative quest of the identity of India's oppressed masses. How do they come to be? How do they come to be oppressed? That is something that he examined very closely. Now moving on to the foundations of reconstruction. And this is by far the most challenging work. It requires vision, it requires insight and pragmatic idealism. You have to be realistic but you must not sacrifice the ideals which you have set forth in your vision and mission. So it is much more challenging work. Ambedkar took a whole long time on the reconstruction. From the time he says in the 30s, I was born a Hindu, I had no choice, but I will not die Hindu because I have choice. To the point where he constructs something to which he can then not only himself go to, but lead others to. That is a journey of about 20 years. It's a long time project. 
After deconstructing the oppressive meta meta narrative, it involves crafting a new emancipatory meta narrative. And we hear the word meta narrative. What is meta narrative? Meta narrative is a grand story that connects everything from our beginnings. Where did we come from? How did we get into the mess we are? And how do we get out of this mess? And where are we heading once we get out of this mess? You can say in one word, it is about worldview. But the heart of worldview is a meta narrative. And if people are to actually escape, they have to have this meta narrative, this grand story. Again, I'll give you two examples from each of the Dalit uh, items. Who is Bali Raja, Bali Raj, and Bali Chan? I have no time to go into details. He will have over much of his writings, but particularly in Gulamji, as well as in his final book, Satya Dharma Pustak. Ambedkar constructed a reform, some call it Protestant, as opposed to Catholic, uh, Navayana Buddhism. This final work was completed in his book, uh, one of his last books, Buddha and his Dharma. Dharma. Even the crafting of the Indian constitution can be seen as a work of reconstruction of the laws of man. And it is in that sense that Ambedkar most resembled his hero, Moses, as the lawgiver. In fact, the depictions classically of Moses in the Bible is always holding these two tablets of stone with the Ten Commandments like this with his hand like this, pointing to the promised land. Well, we are very familiar with somebody who is depicted like this, pointing to the promised land. Even the iconography matches that of his hero. Moving along, I just want to wrap up this brief retrospective survey by highlighting that these are the works of modernists and I purposely emphasize modernists because the elements are all there. Rational. There's a meta narrative. There is truth with agency. Not a constructive truth that is not real truth, but truth with agency. We have control of the truth. And there is a spiritual, religious, if you like, dimension to it in both Kodesh case as well as Medgar's case. 